Well, this was news that I think a lot of us saw coming a few months ago when the Embracer Group announced that they had purchased Middle Earth Enterprises, and there was the discussions that Warner Brother either needed to give up the rights to the films or do something new with them beyond just the War of the Rohirrim. And the Hollywood Reporter is reporting as of like about an uh, earlier this afternoon. It's February twenty third. Says, new Lord of the Rings movies in the works at Warner's and New Line. The studios have struck a multi-year pact with Swedish gaming giant Embracer Group, which holds the film rights to the property. Dun, dun, dun. So this is, allows Warner to develop features based on J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings books and The Hobbit. Um, the Embracer Group, which is the Swedish gaming company, acquired the rights to produce Lotro Films. Uh, just Lord of the Rings, sorry, I said Lotro. Um, games, merchandise, theme park attractions, and live productions when it purchased rights holding Middle Earth Enterprises last year from the Saul Zantz Company. I covered that multiple times last year. Um, this was announced during the Warner Brothers Discovery Call on uh, Investor Call, I should say, today. Um, CEO David Zaslav seeks to assure Wall Street that Warner's is very much in the franchise game here, harking back to the 2000 glory days when the studio was minting money with Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. In November, he said he would like to make a deal with J.K. Alley for more Harry Potter and initially, initially floated the notion of Lord of the Rings return. Uh, Peter Jackson, of course, directed the original trilogy released from 2001 to 2003, um, and they have the animated... Uh, War of the Rohirrim coming in 2024. It says, in a statement, Jackson and his Lord of the Rings partner's friend, Welsh and Philip Boynes, noted they were aware of the latest development. They said, Warner Brothers Embracer Group have kept us in the loop every step of the way. We look forward to speaking with them further to hear their vision for the franchise moving forward. Rights to the Tolkien war works have always been a little dicey here, it says, and a legal dispute. Yeah, we, we were aware of that. It went on between Warner Brothers and the Tolkien estate over royalties and everything else. Um, then, of course, they did The Rings of Power, which is the second age. Um, the movie rights here, it's most importantly noted, uh, focus on the third age. Um, and it says here, this is the interesting thing. Um, so now, that, those are the rights that they existed back then. So the Embracer Group is spreading that net wide. And we've already heard rumors about them wanting to develop like a young Aragorn series, um, which I think was pitched during the... Um, you know, initial bidding that became Rings of Power. Um, what's interesting here, though, is that they could redo the Peter Jackson films. I think many of us would consider that to be a travesty. I would hope that they don't redo those for another... Oh, man, it would be nice to leave them alone for another couple decades before you need to remake them, but I get it because one of the things with rights is that if you purchase the rights to something you generally have to develop something within a specific amount of time frame, which they obviously are doing here. We don't know what those projects are going to be yet. I, I wonder if they would redo the films so soon, especially given that those films have held up pretty well and they're still beloved by all. Um, but in any case, it says here, uh, the movie rights traditionally have focused on the third age when the best known events happen in most beloved characters. Lives. However, it's possible now that War Warners could focus on new stories centering around Tolkien's big guns, such as Gandalf, Bilbo, and Aragorn. There's, um, it says has here, and of course, as much as new movies present opportunities for big franchise swings, they will come under fan scrutiny, much as the current Warner Brothers franchise plays, such as DC and Fantastic Beasts do, not to mention people are already upset about the way that the Rings of Power was handled. In a statement, those working on the project acknowledged the task ahead. They said, we understand how cherished these works are and working together with our partners at New Line Cinema and Warner Brothers Pictures, we plan to honor the past, look to the future, and adhere to the strongest level of quality and production value, said Lee Guinchard, CEO of Free Mode, which is part of Embracer. Um, it says here, Warner Brothers film bosses Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abney signaled that they are not interested in a reach out of what Jackson has already done, saying in their own statement, oh, so this actually is, I can, I can actually... Okay, this is interesting. Hang on, I need to back up a little bit because I was talking about maybe they'll redo the movies, but I feel that that's too soon. But apparently they've made a statement on that. So 20 years ago, New Line took an unprecedented leap of faith to realize the incredible stories, characters, and world of The Lord of the Rings on the big screen. The result was a landmark series of films that have been embraced by generations of fans. But for all the scope and detail of only packaged into the true trilogies, the vast, complex, and dazzling universe dreamed up by J.R. Tolkien remains largely unexplored in film. The opportunity to invite fans deeper into the cinematic world of Middle-Earth is an honor, and we are excited to partner with Middle-Earth Enterprises and Embracer on this adventure. It says it's not only a coming home for Lord of the Rings, but also a reunion for DeLuca, who was president of production for New Line when the first film in the original trilogy, The Fellowship of the Ring, began production, but he was famously let go before the movie was released. So... 
It sounds to me like they're not interested in redoing the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings films, or at least they're not re they're not interested in telling the story of the four hobbits, you know, the fellowship. They're not interested in retelling that tale because they're going to leave those films alone. So it sounds to me like what they're doing is they're going to be developing, as they say, and delving into the unexplored world within those pages. And if we go back to a lot of the things that were pitched during the um, bidding war for the Rings of Power, what, what became the Rings of Power, one of the things they talked about was, as I mentioned earlier, the Young Aragorn series. But there's also a Gandalf series. It was Gandalf was off doing all these things. There's also things that be, could be done about... Thorin and what he was off doing leading up to the events of uh, the Hobbit. You know, uh, what was Saruman doing along with Radagast and, you know, what were the wizards in the council doing? We could have a Galadriel show, a show about Galadriel and uh, Celeborn. Um, but I think the probably the ones we'll see first are going to be things centered around major characters like uh, Aragorn, Gandalf, Legolas, Gimli. I would highly suspect that we see those types of characters take the forefront because they're the most major well-known and they need to make sure that the first projects that come out are things that are uh, a swing and a hit as opposed to a swing and a miss. I think I think the whole world has watched uh, with the Rings of Power what's going to happen if they come out of the gate inventing characters and stories that weren't actually in the books because that was something that has pretty much been... I would argue internationally um, ridiculed about Rings of Power is that it invented so much stuff and didn't follow the existing stories that were there to tell. So, I mean, obviously we don't have a lot of details yet. All we have is this announcement that um, Warner Brothers and New Line <clears throat> are going to remain in the Lord of the Rings business. Now, honestly, I figured that this was coming in the pipeline when the announcements were made last year because I know when the discussions were being made about Warner Brothers, someone had suggested that Warner Brothers maybe should give it up if they weren't going to produce new television. And I guarantee you that's what this is about. It's about Warner Brothers and New Line saying, well, we're not ready to give up that cash cow because it still generates a ton of income for our studios and our enterprises as they exist. So we want to hold on to those rights. And the only way to hold on to those rights is to develop new properties within that intellectual property. So I don't know if they've already got ideas that they're going to be using or if they're going to be taking pitches from people or what's going to happen yet. This is just the beginning of this huge expansion, which was first discussed. I think I reported on this exactly the, the very same day that the Embracer Group um, bought out Middle Earth Enterprises because that press release was all about how they were going to. I mean, there's already like five Lord of the Rings video games in development right now, including, I think, a couple that we don't even know the names of yet. Um We've got Rings of Power. We're going to have new uh, movies coming out now. And uh, this this specifically mentions films. So this doesn't mention anything about television or anything like that. So lots of territory to explore. Lots of things they could do. The Abracer Group is going to be leveraging the intellectual property of Middle Earth hard in the next decade. Because they're going to want to recoup that two point whatever billion dollar investment they, they undertook. Uh, to get the rights to Middle Earth and Middle Earth Enterprises. So that's the news as I'm reporting it. As always, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you like what you heard here today. Support if you can with memberships, super chats, super stickers, the Patreon page. We have a Discord. I'll see everybody in the next episode. Until then, stay safe and happy reading.